Thanks everyone for joining. This is SIG API, June 18th. If everyone can add their names to the uh, attendees. I've shared the link in the chat. Okay, so the first topic uh, we have today is um, this PR. So in the last um, call, I think it was discussed that this might not um, be applicable to feature freeze um, deadline. Since we are already past this, uh, once this PR is ready to march, uh, do we need to file an exception for this? Uh, what's the process for making an exception? Um, I don't, I don't know, but uh, we could start it. Let's have it merge, and then we'll uh, figure it out. Maybe there will be no need. But I, I see it as a regular bug, so I don't see why, or as a tooling, I don't know if if anyone requires a specific uh, exception. If they okay. will require it, then we will just do it. Okay, sounds good. I think we don't need the tool to go to release branch, I think. Uh, we can filter out all the PRs in the main that gets backported through the tool. And that way we might get away by not maintaining this in multiple releases. Okay, I think uh, there is another pass um, Lubo wants to do. So um, we'll wait for another round of review on that pair. Okay, uh, the other topic I had for today was, I'm trying to find the link, the charter. I remember we discussed the charter a couple calls back. Uh, I'm wondering if any update, if there are any updates here. Yeah, I don't have any updates. I, I did ask for help. Uh, so I, for now, I don't have any update, but it was like uh, the past week was a bit... Uh, all, everyone was in all kind of uh, business trips. So maybe we'll have to wait another week. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I think with that, we can start going through the um, items on to-do list and you know the pull request. Is there any other topic uh, anyone wants to bring up before diving into that? Okay, I hear silence, which means no. Uh, okay. Two. This is an old one, right? Yeah. I think I'm seeing 
some more internal request for getting such kind of Malta's uh, information into the VMI. Uh, I'll have to dig yes. it up and, and read up on this. Yeah. I think those use cases can be solved through this design. For now, I don't see that it got any progress. It was like uh, for two months, I think. Right? Oh. No, three months. Then you think we should see. close this? Uh, no, uh, I don't know. I, if there is a, I will leave it for the clock to, to time it out. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can, we can. I mean, the, the proposal looks, uh, I think, I think the original proposal was, so in general, uh, I'm, I was very focused on if it's not a must, not, not to touch the API and do it from outside, like an integration. And what they wanted here is to, to add, uh, to add an extension, uh, uns uh, like unlimited extension. So someone can add whatever multus parameters they want into the API, which I don't think it's a good idea. It's like the same thing that we don't provide also the whole API of Libvirt. We don't expose it. So the, the way we do allow it is through hooks, like uh, the Libvirt API, we allow hooks to be integrated with sidecars to be integrated so it, they can do it there. Uh, and this in this case, uh, this is what I suggested is that they can use a webhook to intercept the pod creation and add whatever they want over the existing multus that they have there. Like that's like uh, to extend it from from outside the pro project. I, I think this is what they he focused on later, but I think it got. I don't know if he continue it or not. But the it the fact that he didn't responded, then I guess no. Okay, so if I understand correctly, the is the webhook uh, supposed to be on pod or on the VM? On what? You mentioned uh, the first part of the um, solution is to have a webhook uh, to inject the annotations that are needed, right? Is that yes. going to be on the VMI object or on the pod object? It's it's no, the, the, they will add whatever they want through annotate. So I'd, the, the, they wanted the originally to have it through the VMI to input information. So it will create the pod with the, with the additional multi stuff. So I told them, no, I, let's try to do it without touching the API. So the, Solution was to have an annotation. I think this is what it's here. They, to have a special annotation on the, actually it doesn't matter where, on the VM, for example, but it's an agreement that they have with themselves. You don't need, you, we don't, it doesn't require us to manage that annotation. And the webhook will just intercept that uh, VMI creation, uh, sorry, the pod creation and when it sees the pod creation and it sees that it's uh, from a VMI, then it will look for the relevant VMI or VM and uh, and read the annotation and do whatever is needed. I think something like that. It's, I think the this pattern can be repeated uh, in, in other extensions that are requested from the project, like if it's not something very, very common, then uh, this this should be the path to to add yeah. things to the project, not to add every single thing that is po that's possible to the to the project like this, but to try to limit it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. the The only big thing that comes to my mind is that with this approach at very, very large scale, uh, the webhook will have to be invoked uh, for pods. Might be, you know, a, there might be some fine tuning that needs to happen there, but you know, for a generic case, this works out really well. 
um is there a is is there a way we can document this approach somewhere um yes that's like it sounds um maybe we should we should do like uh we could do some uh, guidelines for extending uh, functionality in covert uh, yeah. what are the options that to and and give several scenarios maybe from the ones that we encounter like this one and there are others like there is another feature that was i feel i feel a little bit uh, uh, bad but that i'm blocking everyone but uh, there was another one that was pretty big actually and uh, it was very similar to, to i mean it was not very similar to this one but it was supposed to add a lot of logic inside the covert and uh, i think we we managed to to us to do it from outside uh, but yes you are right we, maybe we should have a guidelines to uh, how to treat extend extensions to vm and, and post it maybe we should start with a blog and then do something more formal yeah Is it me or, or I don't hear you? No, no. I'm just taking time okay. to note note the discussions. I don't want to lose this. So. Uh, you see my screen though, right? Yes. I think with this one, maybe we should add a, like a, a task for this. I think instead of doing this on a pod, you can also do it in the VMI since the VMI object is available in the sidecar. Uh, Not really. You it's can... like if you, what do you mean to do it? You need uh, you need to change the multus and anno multus content, the multus annotation content, which is on the pod. Oh, I see. Okay, and doing it the. Um, annotation way you would you would need you'd also need the webhook to create that environment variable right like the downward api uh, from that annotation again can you repeat sorry there was noise here um so just having the annotation on the pod will not make the information available in the sidecar the webhook will additionally have to use that annotation as a downward API in some environment variable. And that way yeah, it if they need it. To but I don't okay. think in this case they need it. They only want it what they wanted in this uh if you are talking about the multus extend extension thing, they just wanted to control more fields of the multus, like to be able to input them. Got it. Okay. One second, sorry, I need to go and shout at someone to shut up. Yeah. I'm back, sorry. Yeah. And you said we need to add a task to document this, right? Maybe a blog post or add something else. I think I'm going to go ahead and create that. Yeah. Maybe to collect them, like we should collect what we know, like this one, and and create some uh, something from it. It, it sounds like re uh, use, useful. I think as as a blog post can it can help for uh, for recording the 
specific incidents like this one, but uh, like a, a guide a guideline for the project. It it can also be done like that, and the guideline can like can present all the all the things that were gathered with time. I'm not sure which what is the best. Uh, what would you start with here? I uh, think I'm going to. Does this label work in assigning the task? Uh, yeah, it should work. Okay. Maybe it should be okay. slash sig, uh, then API or something. I would get confused. Uh, let me just add here. Well, okay, I think that will cover it. Yeah, just do a slash sig then. Uh... No, it will not help. Now. I'm not sure if it will work out. But yes, this this is what I mean. Like this? Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. that worked. Okay, cool. So I think I'm going to check that off. The next one is this. Uh, we have added reasons for events. The oh, only yes. thing I want to check here is that when do these events get raised? <clears throat> I think this did just moved, I think if I'm not mistaken. Right? Uh I'm trying to find it. Oh, this because of this. Yes, maybe it was maybe. moved from a different package. So here is 
yeah. in this package and it moved. Okay. I don't think there is anything for us to do here. Why did this call? Oh, okay. So initially this was a find API change and then before merging that label got dropped. So probably the files got changed and there is no action item for us here. Okay, so this is the next one. And So I think this is a way to turn this switch off. Basically it's overriding the uh, feature of one API field by introducing another API field. I'm trying to find that in API spec. Let's Where is this acceptable time? Oh. I'm not sure if I can do this review online. We'll have to take this offline. Yeah. I'm confused by the term. Is it is there a uh this changes the API? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, it does. It adds a new field to the migration type. Yeah. A new field? Okay. It, yeah, this one. Yeah. This is the migration type.
Specifically, it has a, a design proposal? Uh, no, it doesn't. And they explain it in the description here? No. <laughs> okay, it's also from uh, Vladik, which is a... Uh, okay, I guess we need to... And it's very old as well. So Yeah, definitely. I don't know what happened. Is there I a, think... Is, uh, there, there was a comment yesterday. Yes, I think it's discussed. Maybe we should we should do we should add it to homework to to review it for the next time. To come after it's reviewed. Oh, this one. Uh, I think this is small. We can just conclude this online. Uh, what is this? Yeah, let me give context. I think they if change I it, find, they... yeah, they're changing the. Yeah, just just one second. Why it actually changed? No. So you see this cloud in it, no cloud source, right? Here, the JSON field is user data secret ref. And you see this cloud in it config drive source. And here, the JSON is a secret ref, not user data secret ref. Uh, so they are trying to fix this in inconsistency. However, there is one more inconsistency within the field, uh, which is this user data base 64, right? It has user data, user data, everything here. Only this field does not have user data. So I'm not sure what would be the right way to do it. However, this will break users immediately. So yeah, but I don't understand I don't, what I don't, I, what it's odd for me is that it's like, it's supposed to work with both. I don't get it. I don't know why I mean, they are changing it because it's consistent, <laughs> right? Here. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't understand what, what, what's wrong. Like who said it's wrong? I they say that user data secret reference is, is not. Is inconsistent with other cloud labels. I don't know. It's, like <laughs> it's logic one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's inconsistent with uh, the other labels, but I, so we saw that there are uh, but I don't understand how can someone change it and it still work. Ah, they want, okay. Maybe maybe networking has done this. Uh, I don't know. It collides with networking or with what? I I still don't follow why this is an issue. Uh, so they are talking about consistency within the fields, labels. They said, uh, yeah. What labels? I don't know. What what does it mean? Labels. Okay, here, convention for no cloud data has general form, user data. 
Oh, I see. So the, what they want is the entire field to be uh, camel cased. So because this user data is missing here, while others are having that, that's why it's inconsistent. I I mean, I'm just willing to say that this is this will break users. We don't support breaking users. Uh, we should close this PR. Or at least if this is such an issue, the correct way of solving this would be deprecate this field, add a new field that has this uh, label and use both, but never you know, uh, drop this field. Yes, I don't think it's it's not even I don't I don't think we even have an option. We cannot deprecate it for sure. like uh, that's v one. It cannot be done. Uh, it's not even in the I think people are using it. So, or we can assume they are. Um, unlikely this will ever happen. I don't understand what is the confusion really, but fine. Yeah. Maybe they, they should just up, uh, this, to suggest to update the documentation. But w what was the last, uh, ah, it was very old. It's also very old. Yeah, me, second. yeah. And Maybe they should just uh, uh, consider uh, updating the documentation to if if it's confusing. Sure. I think we can track this on our board, but there is obviously nothing to do here. Lubo has already made that comment, so uh, I can. Add. Okay. All right. So I think this is the only thing. All right. So now, okay. Good. This one. I forget if we already discussed this in one of our previous calls. Oh, this is merged. This is, ah, yes, we, uh, this one, it's odd. This one, um, yes, we discussed it in the past, I think. Um, this was, the story went very, so in the end, the, the proposal is here and got merged, but in the end, it will not get. It did not get in. It was. I mean, there was also an implementation. The implementation did not get in in the end because there was disagreement, um, and they had a, a backup plan to do it externally, like to integrate from it from using using an external controller and web books and stuff like that. Ah, okay. There is uh, a PR that implements it. I mean, the, but again, it, it got closed in the end. 
So then do we want to remove this document from here? Or maybe add this into the alternate section and uh, describe the correct uh, implemented way? Yeah, there is no, I think there is no yet an implementation way. I think, but uh, you are right. Maybe this should go to what I don't know if we we have like a, such a folder that says that this is no longer, it go through. Uh, I think, I think we should just, we might not want to create a new folder, just that in this design doc, the current approach that did not get accepted should go into alternate approach. Describing oh, okay. the yes to update the to update the design to the alternative yeah yes yes we should ask for it but let's uh, let's wait with it maybe we should delay it until they have an alternative and then and then do it because currently they are not happy about it not getting it so okay so... I will not want uh... to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tension more than it is. Sure. Um, how do we track this? Uh, for now, do you want me to check this off, or you want me to put this into to do to come back later on? Not sure. Maybe just keep it here open like this. Oh, this is you. Nice. Yes, this one. There is. There are actually two discontinued. One is the Mac fit up, and there is another one uh, past. I think it's one. Yeah, the past one. I think we looked at it. Yeah. yeah so it's the same. The the okay. my only take take away from this uh, is that probably there is another. I mean, the current approach was that existing workloads still continue working, even even after the application. If, if so, if a VM was defined and running, and the upgrade happened, the, that VM is assured to continue running. But probably we need another step, like a, a full deprecation or a full removal, which says, okay, uh, now not only that we don't. Uh, that will not support new things to get in. We are going also to, if there are existing workloads, we are removing them and there is no, and they may fail. Now, this is this is allowed at least for, uh, for things that are feature gated. Um, and it's up to the maintainers, I guess, to keep it, keep it or not. And it's also not not a sure like uh, you could remove everything and then the workload may still work. It depends actually on the what's going on there. But yeah. yeah, I think the issue is that when you remove things, uh, you still need to keep the API there, right? I think we have concluded. No, the API is right? there. Like the API, like you see here, it's it's still there. The I mean the fields are reserved. But the, we are not talking about the API. We are talking about uh, there is a reconciliation happening in the controllers and in the in in our case, Vir controller and the Vir handler are still reconciling old VMs. So that code remained there. Uh, and yeah. in order to remove it, we need to drop the assurance that. Uh, all the workloads would continue working after uh, after this deprecation. So, so it's like for first of all, I think the existing step of doing it softly, removing it softly, and not touching the existing workloads is uh, is I think that should be optional. Uh, it's up to the the one who do, do it does it, and uh, and and we need another step uh, to completely remove it not i'm not talking about the api reservation of the fields i think what should happen is that once it is deprecated right 
uh, before removal, we should, well, I don't know how the steps would work, but I wonder if we can change the value of this API field in update or create uh, web hooks. What do you uh, mean? That the value of this deprecated field, right? Yes. So the field is reserved in the API. Uh, so interface binding method is reserved in the API, right? If the value of that, if we can change it to deprecated interface binding method, right? In, it is. in the update. Uh, it is changed. Look at the, uh, go to the, the schema go or the type go, I don't remember which. No, I'm not talking about the field name. You're, yeah, you're talking about is. this, right? No, I'm not talking about the field name. I'm talking about in the validator, right? Uh, here, if we change, if we default this to a garbage value, right? Yeah. So what that what that will mean is whatever part of code is reconciling that garbage value will then start breaking. So you can find out what breaks even before we ship this to users right there in the CI. Or I don't know. I don't know if CI has coverage for it. Uh, ah, you mean that? No, but then you need, so that's, I think this is what happens now. What happens now is that there is a validator and it checks the feature gate and the feature gate, if it is used, it will, it will warn and uh, blow up or something it will stop. Or... I think this exists today, but I think there is an, there requires, there needs to be another step after this, which this step specific is, I, it so, sounds to me like it should be optional. Why? Because a feature gate usually means that it's it's the risk is on the user, not on the on the on the owner of the in the project. So, in this sense, I would like to have another step here, and the, the other step says I will just ignore everything else. I'm I'm going to remove everything except having the reserved API fields, so it will not so no one will reuse them again in the future, but everything else I want to delete because I don't want to, to maintain that anymore, at that logic anymore. And that if anyone will try to use it again, it's on the, they, they just use something undefined and it's their problem, something like that. But the minimum yeah. could be to, to say that if a field is used, then it's disallowed. And as you said, then it will be in the webhook. I think today it is like that as well. If you see the update admitter, for example, I think it's like that. Okay. Yeah. In the web books, just look for web books. It's down, down. Uh, this ah. is the web book, right? Uh, create. Yeah. And there is just create. Yes. That's for the feature gate, for example. I don't remember if it exists also for other stuff. Yeah, this is for the feature game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think that uh, the validation of uh, some feature being used, even if the feature gate is not set up, already existed before. So I'm guessing that part did not was not removed. Like like originally, if you have a feature gate and you have fields that depend on that feature gate, if someone is using the fields while the feature gate is not set, then it will blow up as well. But yeah. I, anyway, I, I'm not I, sure I that think, it is worth it. Yeah. Yeah, so. that uh, that situation is 
basically the components that reconcile that field not respecting the feature right yes right yeah i think that 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 is about we need to i need i think i need to add it to the or to or to create a a dedicated application document or uh, yeah probably that will be better to create a dedicated application thing so it will be more detailed there because we didn't do that with the feature life cycle we just let the implementation for later yeah uh would you be able to create an issue for that uh, i i think i can do it as well uh, but I think we should have it in our to do board uh, to document that as a follow up for future life cycle okay can you just write it down here so i'll remember can even assign me to it. Uh, I'll have to switch accounts for me to assign this to you. Let me do okay, that. it's no, no problem. I'll do this after the call. Okay. Okay, all right. I think that's it. We went through a lot of uh, PRs today, I think. Since we have just landed feature freeze, I'm not sure if we will have a lot of API changes. No, uh, yeah, there is one. There is one that I didn't understand. That one, no, that's a refactoring. The second one with the ACPI index, I I responded. I don't really understand what's going on there. Like he only changed the API without changing the implementation. Maybe he changed. I don't know. It's very strange. So it's like he did a change to the API, but nothing. No one is touching this uh, field. So it's like it's like yeah, I tried to tell him that. But, uh, what? Maybe they just forgot to push the commit. I don't know. Maybe I. This is what I tried to tell him. So for now, I'm. I will wait to see what. What he says. This one is approved. The fields only change. And it's in
So I think the only issue I have with this is anyone who is using the clients client library for the API has to forcefully change the constant. Uh, I think that's a small change to make on that part. So it should be fine. I, I don't think that it should block this. Yeah, just like this. And unless you have something to block this, I think we can let this one go. Yeah, I don't think uh, it's just a name. Why did this get API change label? Yeah, I don't think this is API. Again, I think just a name change, nothing in the API. And adding few test cases. I don't think this is being actually dropped. There are things in this <clears throat> file that uses that dependency. Not sure why this is needed. Uh, Okay, so in the future, we'll be considering removing it. Okay, it's just shuffling things around. The, the only thing to be careful here is that 
the CDI changes. CDI is a beta one API, and we are bringing in things into V1 from that API. Yeah, but uh, I don't know why they why it's still better. It's supposed to be, in my opinion, V1. I don't know what it's. It's we already use. Uh, it's like it's not something new. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, I I understand that. But if it is beta and if there are things in there that needs to be addressed, then should be cautious of yeah. bringing things here. If there are nothing, um, then you know that is stopping it from going V one. Then yeah. Okay. I think we'll pause here. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.